So I have no financial interest uh, in this uh, communication. As you know, um, there's uh, previously we had a symmetric intracorneal ring segment with a different uh, shape with different length and uh, thickness. And uh, uh, we have uh, now the last generation of uh, asymmetric or progressive intracorneal ring segment. And uh, this last uh, edition is uh, very special because uh, as you said, um, it's a double progression with width and uh, thickness. So we have different thickness, different length, and uh, different diameter. These are uh, clockwise sense and counterclockwise sense. In my opinion, to understand the function of your ICRS, uh, this is an OCT in, uh, with the intracorneal ring segment inside. If you look to the thickness of the epithelium, here and here, I mean in the periphery, you see that there is a thickness uh, more important than in the center. And if you measure it, and uh, we make shape of this new uh, theoretical uh, lens, it looks like concave lens, as well as in uh, the posterior part of the cornea with the intracorneal ring segment, if you shape this new uh, effect of the ring, there's, we can imagine that it's like an, another uh, concave uh, lens inside the cornea. So we can say that we have two concave uh, lens inside the cornea with intracorneal ring segment. So it can be a concave sphere, sphere if it's uh, 320 degrees, or a concave cylinder uh, if it's uh, one ring or uh, uh, an asymmetric concave cylinder, if it's an asymmetric uh, intracorneal ring segment. So I want to show you my surgical procedure. Uh, first of all, I always start with the mark reference of the pupil and the center and uh, the horizontal lines. Look at the, the eye of the patient. So I use the slit lamp so the patient looks uh, in the center, so I have the pupil in front of me and I ask uh, my patient to hide the, uh, the opposite eye so they will really in the um, visual axis. Then I mark, as you see, the horizontal lines, zero and 120 at 180 degrees and the center of the pupil. Then uh, as you see under the FEM2 laser, FEM2 uh, second uh, laser, you see that we are able to center our uh, interface to, uh, to have a good positioning. And the, the very interesting thing here that in this case, it's very good, but if I need, I can rotate the eye as you see here to just the axis of uh, the, uh, the FEM2 second uh, uh, laser, laser beam. So in this case, I will be sure that there is no cyclotorsion uh, of the axis. I think that it's very interesting to perform uh, the, 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 the surgical procedure like this. Then, as you know, we start first with a, a small dissection and uh, we uh, put the intracorneal ring segment uh, in the good axis because the, the, the femtosecond was done in the good axis. As uh, you said, uh, there is symmetric keratoconus with the, the, which they need symmetric ICRS. So for the bottom eye, two symmetric corneal rings from each side in the oval one or crescent, we need one intracorneal ring segment. And sometimes I put two oh, uh, intracorneal ring segment, but not the same. Maybe the second one, the upper one can be uh, less, uh, lo uh, less longer. And in the nipple shape, we need uh, 320 degrees, as you said. 
I just want to show you some example. This is a case of minus seven uh, keratoconus uh, stigmatism in uh, bottom uh, in the bottom. When we put two intracorneal ring segments from each side, and you see you see the progression. And uh, after four months, we are on minus only minus two of the stigmatism with the ten to ten of uh, vision. This is a crescent shape with only one. Uh, intracorneal ring, minus six of astigmatism, and four months later, you see the difference. And uh, here you can see the differential map with um, the flattering shape, which is very important. And we see that it's very symmetrical. This is another crescent form. For this case, I put two corneal rings, different shape, different length, and uh, depth. Four months later, the result shows something very different. And as you see here, the differential map with the almost minus uh, nine uh, diopter of astigmatism. This is a nipple shape. And this is the result four months after. So we made uh, our first study in the department uh, with the symmetrical intracorneal ring segment. So when we remark a best uh, corrected and corrected visual acuity, uh, best uh, spherical equivalent evolution and the less keratometry in our, all our cases and uh, in all our uh, rings. For the asymmetric keratoconus, we have to uh, use the asymmetric progressive intracorneal ring. As you said, the first form is the asymmetric bow tie or snowman, the asymmetric oval or duck, or the pellicid like, which we can call it a uh, lobster claw. Here is an example of a snowman form with minus 12.75 astigmatism, two intracorneal ring segments, asymmetric, four months later. The result is very different, and this is the differential map. And as you see, we have a, like a snowman differential map with a reduction of the astigmatism and uh, the power of the astigmatism uh, until 10, 10, more than 10 diopters of difference. And the astigmatism goes from two, minus 12 to minus 3, and the vision, of course, was best better. This is a, an OCT of uh, this case. So this is before the surgery. One month of, uh, after the surgery, and as you see, the epithelium start to grow in uh, the upper side of the, uh, the cornea. And then four months after the surgery, you see how the epithelium uh, change the the thickness and especially in uh, uh, in the part of uh, the bottom of the eye. So as you see here, if we want to uh, compare the epithelium and the, the the differential map of the topography, we can conclude that it's the same mechanism. And uh, as I said, uh, epithelium is a very important. Here is another example for. Uh, a, a duck form, it's a little bit different. So the, the ring should be in the other sense. And the result, four months later, astigmatism from minus six to minus two. This is an asymmetric uh, snowman. For this case, I tried with two asymmetric intracorneal ring segment, but not the same thickness from uh, for both parts, and uh, the result was was good, but uh, the patient was happy because he he was minus eight of astigmatism and then minus one, and the the vision was about when ten to ten. And if you want to see the evolution, it was very progressive, but the result at the end was very good. And uh, as you see here in the OCT, in this case, you see the epithelium uh, map, which is uh, very, uh, uh, very clear. Here is an example of uh, post-keratoplasty uh, stigmatism management. 
for this case, I used uh, an uh, asymmetric intracorneal ring segment. And the astigmatism goes from minus eight to uh, minus four, minus three, excuse me. And uh, you see the differential map uh, in the bottom of uh, the screen. And uh, this is the OCT. And as you see, this very interesting map of the epithelium, you see that the epithelium uh, thickness, it's very clear and very uh, more important in uh, the under part of the cornea uh, in front of the, the thinnest uh, part of the, of, the, uh, of the ring. Here is another example with an asymmetric intracorneal ring. The result four months later and the differential map. Even for very, very small astigmatism, like in this case, it was just minus 1.3 uh, of astigmatism, but the, the lady was very uh, unhappy with the coma. And uh, I put an, an asymmetric intracorneal ring segment, and she was very happy because there is no coma. Uh, as you see, uh, the, the, the coma, it's about zero and uh, the astigmatism it's plus 0 0.3 um, and the lady was very happy and if you see the differential map this this is very uh, uh, clear result because we see that the differential map uh, looks like a duck so we can conclude that the the, the effect of this kind of uh, asymmetric uh, intraconial rings perform uh, an, uh, an asymmetric uh, uh, flattening. And here is very a good, very, very good example to show it. Here is the snowman, intracorneal rings, inverted snowman, we can use the intracorneal ring segment symmetric too. And uh, the result was very, very good. And you see the differential map is very clear with the almost 11.6 uh, dioptries of difference. These are very good example. This is another inverted snowman, double intracorneal ring segment symmetric. Four months later, no astigmatism about 0 0.3 and the differential map with plus 10 diopter uh, of difference, which is very, very good. And uh, the guy was very happy four months later. These are uh, other example. So I put two intraconial ring and the result. And uh, in uh, the bottom of the cornea, you can, the, of the topography, uh, you can see the, the shape of uh, the posterior elevation, which is very, uh, clear that uh, and it's in the front of the corneal rings and we can uh, guess that there is asymmetric intracorneal rings in the inside the cornea and look to the differential map uh, in this case you see that it acts everywhere uh, uh, only in the flattest axis and the result was very good because of uh, the, uh, the symmetry of this uh, keratoconus. So we have made the first study comparing a symmetry versus uh, symmetric intraconial ring segment with the 60 I, 68 ices. And the main conclusion was uh, uh, that the, this kind of uh, uh, intraconial ring segment reduces better the vertical asymmetry and the high order operation in the, in the the snowman keratoconus 4. This is another study of another intraconial ring segment uh, asymmetric and uh, the conclusion was that uh, we reduced the coma and we uh, had a, a better uh, good uh, a better uh, acu visual acuity after uh, and it was concerning 27 eyes. Uh, these are um, other examples with the intracorneal ring segment, the AGL Pro, uh, the latest uh, uh, the latest version. So look to the, this part of the cornea and four months after. So this is with the, the new OCT uh, topographer. 
and look to the differential map. And here is very, very clear effect of uh, the, uh, this kind of uh, intraconial ring segment. I don't know if you see my mouse moving. Uh, yes. So here in this part of the cornea, we see the posterior elevation of the ring. And uh, it, it, it's really the same shape uh, as the um, as a, uh, a duck uh, form of a keratoconus. This is another example. The astigmatism four months later and uh, the shape, as you see in the differential map, this area was, only this area was concerned by the, um, by the ring and all the other parts was not uh, uh, concerned only this part, the opposite part of uh, the, the shape, the, the area. And the area is really good shape, uh, uh, visible here. I don't know if you see it very well. This is another case. Four months later. And look to the high degree of uh, change. It's about 11.5 uh, diopter of difference uh, four months later. Here is another example. Before, after, and the differential map. Another example. Before. after and the differential map. There are always a very, very good uh, results. This is the last one, I think, before the surgery, after putting the ring. And here we see the, the differential map with the area of the action of the ring, which is really in front of the axis chosen by uh, before the surgery. So in conclusion, as you said, symmetrical uh, keratoconus need symmetric uh, corneal ring in uh, both eye, oval and in the nipple. For the asymmetric keratoconus, snowman, duck and lobster claw, we need intraconeal ring segment, but progressive one. Thank you so much.